It's the Cube, covering the virtual Vertica Big Data Conference 2020, brought to you by Vertica. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this special digital presentation of the Cube. We're tracking the Vertica Virtual Big Data Conference. This is the Cube's, I think, fifth year doing the BDC. We've been to every big data conference uh, that they they've held, and we're really excited to be helping with the digital component here in these. Interesting times. Ron Cormier is here, Principal Database Engineer at the Trade Desk. Ron, great to see you. Thanks for coming on. Hi, David. My pleasure. Good to see you as well. So we're we're talking a little bit about your your background. You got you know, you're basically a Vertica and database guru. But tell us about your role at the Trade Desk, and then I want to get into a little bit about what the Trade Desk does. Sure. Uh, so I'm a principal database engineer at the Trade Desk. Um, the, the Trade Desk was one of my customers when I was working with HP uh, at HP as, as a member of the Vertica team. And uh, I, I joined the Trade Desk in early 2016. And uh, since then, I've been working on building out their Vertica capabilities and, and expanding the, the data warehouse footprint in a kind of ever growing uh, database technology, data volume environment. And, and the Trade Desk is an ad tech firm and, and you, you sort of specialize in, in real time ad serving and, and pricing. And I guess real time, you know, yes. people talk about real time a lot. We, we, we define real time as before you lose the customer. Maybe you could talk a little bit about you know, the Trade Desk and, and its business and maybe how you define real time. Totally. Um, so uh, to, to, to give everybody kind of a frame of reference, anytime you pull up your phone or, or your, your laptop and you go to a website or you use some app and you see an ad, what's happening behind the scenes is an auction is taking place and people are bidding on the privilege to show you an ad. And um, across the open internet, uh, this happens seven to 13 million times per second. And so uh, the ads, uh, the, the whole auction dynamic and the display of the ad needs to happen uh, really fast. So that's, that's about as real time as, as it gets uh, outside of high frequency trading as, as far as I'm aware. Um, so we, uh, we part the Trade Desk uh, participates in those auctions. We, we bid on behalf of our customers, which are ad agencies and the agencies represent brands. So the agencies are the, the Mad Men uh, companies of the world, and they have brands that under their under their guidance, and so uh, they they give us budget to to spend to place the ads and and dis and display them, and once the ads get displayed, so we bid on hundreds of thousands of uh, auctions per second. Once once we make those bids, uh, anytime we do make a bid, some data flows into our our data platform, uh, which is powered by Vertica. And um, so we're getting uh, hundreds of thousands of events per second. We have other uh, events that, that flow into Vertica as well. And we clean them up, we aggregate them, and then we run reports on the data. Um, and and uh, we run about 40,000 uh, reports per day uh, on, on behalf of our customers. The, re the reports aren't, aren't as, as, as real time as, as I was talking about earlier. They're more batch oriented. Um, our customers like to see big chunks of time, uh, like a whole day or a whole week or a whole month uh, on, on a single report. So we wait right. for that time period to complete and then, and then we run the report and send them the results. So you, you have one of the largest commercial uh, infrastructures uh, in the big data sphere. Uh, we're, we're paint a picture for us. I understand you've got a couple of like 320 node clusters. We're talking about petabytes of data, but, but, but describe yep. what your environment looks like. Sure, so uh, like I said, we've been Vertica customers for a while um, and, and we started out with, with a bunch of enterprise clusters. Uh, so the, the enterprise mode is the traditional Vertica deployment where the compute and the storage is tightly coupled, all the RAID arrays on, on the servers. And we had four of those and, and, and we, were, we were doing okay, but our, our volumes were ever increasing. We wanted to store more data and uh, we wanted to run more reports in a shorter period of time. Push, keep pushing, and so uh, we had we had these four clusters, and and then we uh, we started talking with with Vertica about Eon mode, and and that's Vertica's separation of compute and storage, where um, 
you get the, the, the compute and the storage can be scaled independently. We can add storage without adding compute or vice versa, or we can add both. So that, so that was um, something that we were, we were very interested in uh, for a couple of reasons. One, our, our enterprise clusters were running out of disk. Uh, like we, and, and adding, adding disk is expensive in, in enterprise mode. It's a, kind of a pain. Uh, you got to add compute at the same time. So you, you kind of end up in an unbalanced place. Um, so Eon mode, that, that, that problem gets a lot better. We can add disk, uh, infinite disk, because it's backed by uh, S3. And we can add compute really easy to, to, to scale the number of things that we run in parallel, the concurrency, uh, just, just add a subcluster. So um, they are uh, in two uh, US East and US West of, of Amazon, so regionally diverse. And, and um, the real benefit is that they can, uh, we can stop uh, nodes when, when we don't need them. Our workload is fairly lumpy, um, I, I call it. Like we, we, when, after the day completes, we do the ingest, we do the aggregation. We're ingesting and aggregating all day, but the final hour or so needs to be completed. And then um, once that's done, the, the number of reports that we need to run spikes up, it goes, it goes really high. And uh, we, we, we run those reports, we spin up a bunch of extra compute on the fly, run those reports and then spin them down and we don't have to pay for that um, for, for the rest of the day. Um, so, so Eon uh, has been a, a, a nice boon for us for, for both those reasons. Yeah, I'd love to explore Eon a little bit more. I mean, it's relatively new. I think 2018 uh, Vertica announced uh, Eon mode. So it's only been out there a couple of years. So I'm, I'm curious for the folks that haven't moved to Eon mode, can you, which presumably they want to, for the same reasons that you mentioned, why buy compute and storage in chunks when you're running out of storage if you don't have to? Um, what were some of the challenges that you had to, that you faced in going to Eon mode? What kind of things did you have to prepare for? Were there any out of scope expectations? Can you share that experience with us? Sure. Um, so we we were uh, an early adopter. Uh, we participated in in the beta program. I mean, we I, I I think I think it's fair to say we actually drove the the requirements in, in a lot of ways because we, we we approached Vertica early on. So the challenges uh, were what you'd expect any early adopter to be going through. Um, the uh, sort of getting getting things working as expected. I mean, there's there's a number of uh, cases w w which I could touch upon, like um, oh, we found an efficiency in the way that it that it accesses the data on S3, and it was it was uh, accessing the data too frequently, which ended up was was just expensive. So our our S3 bill went up uh, pretty significantly for a couple of months. Um, so that was a challenge, but uh, we, we worked through that. Another was um, that, that we recently uh, made huge strides in with Vertigo was the ability to stop and start nodes and not have to, to start them very quickly, um, and when they start to not interfere with any running queries. So when, when we create, when we want to spin up a bunch of compute, um, it, there was a point in time when it would it would break certain queries that were already running. So that that was a challenge. But it, uh, again, uh, the the Vertica team has been quite responsive to uh, sol solving the, these issues, and, and and now that's behind us. Um, in terms of those who, who need to get started, there's a or looking to get started. There's a there's a number of things to think about. Uh, off the top of my head, there there's sort of new configuration items that that you'll want to uh, think about, like um, how uh, instance type. Uh, so certainly, the Amazon has a variety of instances, and uh, the um, it's important to consider one of Vertica's. Uh, Architectural advantages in these areas. Vertica has this caching layer on on the instances themselves, and um, what that does is, if we can keep the data in cache, what we've found is that the, the performance is basically the same performance of enterprise mode. Um, so uh, having a, a good size cache when when needed can, can be important. So we went with the i3 instance types. Uh, which have a lot of uh, local NVMe storage that uh, we we can so we can cache data and get get good performance. That's one thing to think about. Um, uh, the number of nodes, the instance type, certainly the number of shards is, is a sort of technical uh, uh, item that needs to be considered. It's how the data gets gets distributed. It's sort of a layer on top of the segmentation that that some Vertica uh, engineers will, will be familiar with. Uh, and, and probably, I mean, the, the, uh, one, 
of the big things that uh, one, one needs to consider is how how to get data in the database. So if you're if you have an existing database, there's no sort of nice tool yet to to suck all the data into an Eon database. And so um, I think they're working on that. But at our at the point we got there, we had to we exported all our data out of the enterprise cluster as S, as Parquet, bumped it out to S3, and then we had the Eon cluster suck that data. Yeah, so awesome advice. Thank you for, for sharing that with the community. So, but but at the end of the day, so it sounds like you had some learning to do, uh, some some tweaking to do, uh, and and obviously you had to get the data in. Uh, at, at at the end of the day, was it worth it? What was the business impact? Yeah, uh, it it definitely was worth it for us. I mean, so right now we have four times the data in our Eon cluster that. Um, that, that we have in our in our enterprise clusters. Um, we still run some enterprise clusters. Uh, we started with four at the peak, now we're down to two. So we have the two Eon clusters. So um, it, 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 it's been, I think our business would say it's it's been a huge win. Like we're doing things that we really never could have done before. Like forexing the data on enterprise would have been really difficult. It would have required non-trivial engineering to do things like daisy chaining clusters together. Um, and then how to how to how to aggregate data across clusters, which uh, would is again non-trivial. Um, so we have we have all the data we want. We can continue to grow data. Um, we're 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 running reports on seasonality, uh, so our customers can compare their campaigns last year versus this year, which is something we just haven't been able to do in the past. We've expanded. So that so we grew the data uh, vertically. We've expanded the data horizontally as well. So we, we're adding columns to our aggregates. We're, we're uh, enriching the data much more than than we have in the past. So while we still have enterprise kicking around, uh, our, I'd say our Eon clusters are doing the the majority of the heavy lifting. And and cloud was part of the enablement here, particularly with scale. Is that right? And are you running? Certain definitely, uh, workloads definitely. On, and you're running running on prem as well, or is it, are you in a hybrid mode, or is it all AWS? Uh, good question. So well, yeah, when I've been speaking about enterprise, it, it, I've been referring to on prem. Yeah. Um, so we have right. we have uh, physical machines on, in in data centers. Um, so yeah, we we are running a hybrid now, and and I mean, and so it's really hard to come to get like an apples to apples direct comparison of of enterprise on prem versus Eon in the cloud. Uh, one thing that that I, I touch upon in my in my presentation is is it would require if I try to get apples to apples, um, I and I think about how I would run the entire workload on enterprise or on Eon. I, I had to run the entire thing, one of the one, both. I try to think about what how many cores we would need CPU cores to to do that, and and um, basically it would be about the same number of cores I think. Uh, for for enterprise on prem versus Eon in the cloud. However, my Eon nodes only need uh, to be running half the cores only need to be running about six hours out of the day. So uh, when the other the other eighteen hours, I can I can shut them down and not be paying for them mostly. Interesting. Okay, and so I got to ask you. I mean, notwithstanding the fact that you got a lot invested in Vertica and you got a lot of experience there. A lot of you know emerging cloud databases. Uh, did, did you did you did you look? I mean, you know a lot about databases, not just Vertica. You're a database guru in many areas. You know, traditional you know, RDBMS as well as MPP, new cloud databases. What what is it about Vertica uh, that works for you in the specific sweet spot that you've chosen? What's really the difference there? Yeah. Um, so I think the, the the key difference is 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 the maturity. Um, the, the, there are a number, I'm familiar with another, a number of other database platforms in, in the cloud and, and otherwise column stores specifically that, uh, that, that don't have the maturity that, that we're used to and, and, and we need at, at our scale. Um, so being able to specify alternate projections, so different sort orders on, on my data, um, is, is huge. And, and, uh, there's other platforms where, where we don't have that capability. And and so um, the their Vertic is of course the original column store and and they've had time to build up a lead in terms of their maturity and features and I think that um, other other column stores cloud otherwise are, are 
playing a little bit of catch up in, in that regard. Of course, Vertica is playing catch up on the on the cloud side. But uh, if I had to if I had to pick whether I wanted to write a column store for scratch from scratch or user defined file system like a cloud file system from scratch, I'd probably think it would be easier to write the cloud file system. The, the column store is 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 where the real um, smarts are. Interesting. Let's talk a little bit about some of the challenges you have in reporting. You had a very very dynamic nature of reporting. Like you said, your 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 clients want to you know they want a time series. They just don't want a snap snapshot of a slice. Uh, but but at the same time, your your reporting is probably pretty pretty lumpy. A very dynamic you know demand curve. So. First of all, is that accurate? Can you describe that sort of you know uh, dynamic dynamism, yep. and how are you handling that? Yep, the, that's exactly right. Uh, it is it is lumpy, and that's <laughs> funny the exact word that I use. Um, so, like at at the end of the UTC day, when UTC midnight rolls around, that's uh, we we do the final ingest, the final aggregate, and then the queue for the number of reports that need to run spikes. Um, so uh, the the majority of those forty thousand reports that we run per day are run in the four to six hours uh, after that spike happens, and so um, that's that's when we need to have all the compute come online, and and uh, that's what helps us answer all those queries as fast as possible. Um, and 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 that's a big reason why Eon is an advantage for us because the rest of the day we kind of we don't necessarily need all that compute and we can shut it down and, and not pay for it. So Ron, I wonder if you could share with us just sort of the wrap here, where, where you want to take this. You're obviously very close to Vertica. You're driving them you know, hard in, in Eon mode. Uh, you mentioned before you'd like you know, the ability to, you know, to load data into Eon mode would have been would have been nice for you. I guess that you're you're kind of over that hump, but what are the kinds of things, if, you know, if Colin Mahoney's here in the room, what are you telling him that you, you want the team, the engineering team at Vertica to, Vertica to work on that would make your life better. I, I think the 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 things that um that 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 need the most attention, sort of near term, is is just the, the smoothing out some of the edges uh, in in terms of uh, making it a little bit more seamless in terms of the cloud aspects to it. So so uh, our, our our goal is to be able to start uh, instances and have them join the cluster in less five minutes. Uh, we're not quite there yet. Um, if you look at some of the other cloud database platforms, they're, they're, they're beating that handily. So, so uh, I, I know the team is, is working on that. Um, some, uh, some of the other things are uh, the control. Uh, like, so like, like I mentioned, while we like control in the column store, uh, we, we also want control on, on the cloud side of things in terms of uh, being able to uh, dedicate uh, a, a cluster subcluster specific so we can we can pin uh, workloads against a specific subcluster and take advantage of the cache that's over there uh, we can say okay this resource pool uh, I mean the subcluster is a new concept relatively new concept for vertica so being able to have control, of, of many things at the subcluster level, the resource pools, configuration parameters, and so on. Yeah, so I mean, I personally, I've always been impressed with Vertica and their ability to sort of ride the wave, adopt new trends. I mean, they do have a robust stack. It's been, you know, been 10 plus years around. Uh, they certainly embrace the dupe, they embrace embracing mach machine learning. Uh, we've been talking about the cloud. So I, I, I actually have a lot of confidence in them, especially when you compare it to other sort of mid last decade MPP column stores that came out, you know, Vertica is one of the few, you know, remaining certainly as an independent brand. So uh, I, I think that speaks to the to the team there and the engineering culture, but Ron, you, you final, final word, you know, just final thoughts on uh, your role, the company, Vertica, wherever you want to take it. Yeah, no, um, I, I, I mean, we're, we're really appreciative and we, we value the partnership that, that, that we have. Um, and, and so I, I think it's been uh, a win-win, like, uh, like our volumes uh, are, are uh, like I know that we have, we have some data that got pulled into their test suite. So I think uh, it, 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 it's been a win-win for both sides and, and it'll be a win 
uh, for other Vertica customers and, and, and prospects, uh, knowing that knowing that that they're working with with some of the highest volume, velocity, variety data that's out there. Well, Ron, thanks for coming on. I wish we could have met face to face at the uh, at the Encore in, in Boston. I think next year we'll be able to do that. Uh, but but appreciate that technology allows us to have these remote conversations. Stay safe. All the best to you and your family. And thanks again. My pleasure, David. Good speaking with you. And thank you for watching everybody. We're covering, this is theCUBE's coverage of the Vertica Virtual Big Data Conference. I'm Dave Vellante. We'll be right back right after this short break.